told me that that was actually for when you're tuning the channels and you know you're trying to get your presets in there that's what those are for and um, the port on the back of the Betamax player Cheese thought that, that was to hook it up into a linear editing system of some sort though I'm not entirely sure but I thought maybe you could also hook in a wired remote since they didn't have wireless remotes at that time and uh, maybe I don't know so now we're going into my segment, my only segment for this episode, and it is Laserdisc Lives. I hope you guys like it. So some of you may be old enough to remember Laserdiscs, but for those of you that don't, I have one right here. This is a Laserdisc from Pulp Fiction. You can see a little reflective there. It's two-sided. Now, Laserdiscs originally came out in 1978, but then they were known as uh, Disco Vision, and um, they came out two years after VHS. Um, they were released through a collaboration between Philips and MCA, though the technology was invented a long time ago in uh, 1958, and then there was a public demonstration in 1972. But uh, back then it used some sort of like transparent disc, not sure how that worked. But um, after Laserdisc came out, that was known as DiscoVision, it got licensed to a bunch of other companies to make basically the same thing, but they called it something different. So there was Reflective Optical Disc, there was Laser Vision, MCA DiscoVision. Uh, Laser Vision is still popular to see on some of these discs. And um, then in the mid 1980s, Pioneer bought the majority of uh, Laserdisc and they started coming out with a whole bunch of players, new stuff going on. And um, laser discs are considered the grandfather of optical discs. CD and DVD are based on laser disc technology. Um, as for the tech specs, the laser disc is 30 centimeters wide or 11.8 inches. So yeah, laser discs were pretty big. But they also came in different sizes. Right here is the EP size, which is about 7.9 inches. And uh, these are mostly used for music videos. This has six Bon Jovi music videos on it. There's uh, an even smaller size, which I think is uh, 4.2 inches, 4.1 inches, something like that. But I don't have any of those. These are actually the EPs. Pretty hard to find. You don't find a lot of those in North America. Um, but then let's let's take some other different formats here. Here's a vinyl record from uh, David Bowie's Aladdin Sane. Just take that up here next to the laser disc. You can see the laser disc is actually a little bit bigger than the vinyl record. So if you don't have a laser disc, but you have a vinyl record, just imagine a vinyl record a little bit larger. But what else do we have? How about you now you have your select division disc. And laser disc. I don't know. It's a little bit bigger, but the caddy on this is kind of big. And then if you want to think about just you know one movie on a bunch of different formats, you know we might have Scarface on laser disc. You just have a Betamax tape. Then you have VHS, which is even bigger. And then you know. Scarface DVD set. Now, if you want to think just disc size, you know, you have your Scarface DVD, then, you know, look at your Scarface laser disc. That's a huge difference right there. They are two sided aluminum discs, and they're coated with plastic. They have analog video, which is natively composite, and they also have analog or digital audio usually Dolby Digital or DTS and that audio is in CD format. Now there's three types of laser discs based on rotation speed which can improve quality much like how VHS tapes you can use like SP mode, SLP mode, EP mode. Um, there's three types. There's CAV, constant angular velocity and that has a runtime of 30 minutes and then there's CLV, constant linear velocity, which is 60 minutes, and this offered a whole bunch more features like slow motion, pause, 
And there's also CAA, which is constant angular acceleration, which is basically an update to CLV, which reduced crosstalk between the chroma and luma, so it was a better picture. And um, usually some discs have CLV written on them, but they're actually CAA discs. Uh, CAA wasn't really a consumer known thing, everybody just assumed you know you had your standard play and your extended play. Um, as for the audio quality, uh, a lot of the early players had poor analog components, so the audio quality would be really bad. But then the audio also varied from disc to disc, so you might have a really good mastering of the analog audio on one disc, but another disc would be awful. And then they moved up to digital sound to try to prevent this. As for the players themselves, originally they used a helium neon laser tube, which is a gas tube, and they used that up to about 1984. After 1984, they used solid state laser diodes, though uh, if you get some of the video files, they might tell you that the tube lasers are a lot better because they have better tracking and they can also read the discs better, especially older discs have a lot better playback using the neon laser tubes. Now there's two basic types of players. The original ones were top loading, so you'd open the top of the player and you'd put in your disc, but later they made front loading players which operate, you know, like your DVD player would where a tray pops out of the front. I'm going to be showing that later. Um, some players would only play one side of the disc at a time. These are the early players. So you'd have to get up out of your chair on the couch or whatever, take the disc out, turn it over, and play the other side. And then if you think about it, you might have a movie with two, three, four discs, so you kept having to do this over and over and over again. But then they started making double-sided players, so you didn't have to go up. And uh, the player itself would switch between sides of the disc using two lasers. And that would give you like a little 15 second pause in between sides, but it was still better than getting up every half hour or an hour to change it. Um, on top of this, there's also players that have like two disc support, so you can put in two discs into one player, so you don't even have to get up to change discs. And there was also something called a laser stack, which existed for a while, where you'd actually have to remove the top of your laser disc player, and you would mount a device on the player that could hold up to ten discs, and then it could change the discs back and forth automatically. Um, and a little note on PAL discs, they have longer playback, but they don't have as many audio options. So you have a sacrifice there, you might get maybe one or two audio tracks, but you might have a longer disc. Um, going into combination players, in the mid 80s, laser disc players would often be equipped with CD reading capacity. And in the mid 1990s, they had DVD playing capacity. I'm gonna be showing both of these. Um, most of them could also play CDVs, which are not to be confused with the VCDs. Um, I don't have a lot of info on CDVs, but I'm guessing that they're similar to laser discs in the fact that they have analog video instead of digital video, which VCDs have. Um, there was also some other interesting combination player stuff going on with Muse, also known as High Vision, which was the Japanese's first like attempt at high definition television in the 1980s and it was actually pretty good it got um I think it was 1035i resolution and if you compare that to like 1080 which we have now that was a long time ago they had this and it was pretty good quality um, I think this was only released in Japan and some of the drawbacks were that you needed an additional box to connect it to your TV and um, I think there was also a problem with motion tracking so if you had like a lot of motion in the scene would become blurry. But these players are often really regarded as like the best players you can get. Um, the comb filter in them, which takes the standard composite video and changes it into chroma and luma for S video, that's apparently like the best comb filter in the world. Like arguably that is top of the line comb filtering. And um, these players are also good at reading discs with laser rot. Some of you might be asking, what's laser rot? In the early 1990s, some of you might remember a batch of CDRs made by Philips that had an adhesive that put the disc to the backing, and this adhesive would actually eat into the disc and cause a bunch of problems with it. Now, laser disc was 
the originator of this problem. Um, some of the early discs had a certain backing in them when they did the two sides together and this adhesive would eventually eat into the aluminum and cause it to oxidize. Now what does that mean on the disc? Some of them might be actually as good looking as this. You can have a sealed disc that there doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it at all and it'll have laser rot. Um, some more extreme cases, the disc actually has like brown specks on it that might look like dirt, but it's actually underneath the plastic layer, so it's in the aluminum. And basically, if you have that, your disc has some problems. But right here is a picture of some actual video that has laser rod. You can see all the little pixely lines. Those are problems for reading the disc because of the laser rod. Here's a full motion video of the laser rod and you can see that it degrades the video quality pretty well. Now it is possible to digitally try to remove some of this laser rot if your disc isn't so bad that it won't play. It doesn't look perfect, but at least it's better than having no disc at all. The advantages for laser discs was that they were cheap to make. Uh, VHS tape had like 14 different components and a laser disc, you know, you could just pump them out. They're also said to last a lifetime if you keep them in good condition. Uh, a VHS tape will wear out after a certain number of plays, but a laser disc can basically be played forever. Uh, the resolution is also a lot better. It's uh, 425 lines versus a VHS tape which has 240, so that's almost double the resolution of a VHS tape. And they came out about the same time. There was also a lot of special editions with Laserdisc, so you could have bonus features, trailers, different audio tracks, commentary tracks, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally see in tape. There was a jump to frame option, which it, it's not even in some DVD players where you just input a frame number and you're there, you don't have to do any fast forwarding or anything. There are some disadvantages to Laserdiscs. Uh, they are very large when compared to other formats. You can't record to them. They have limited playback, they're heavy and cumbersome, the players themselves are pretty heavy too. Now you might ask, why would you use a laser disc today? Uh, some museums actually use them for looking at pages of newspaper back when they began. Laser discs were pretty popular as compared to VHS tapes. You might have like a store demo unit laser disc that displays store information over and over and over again. Uh, they're also used a lot for video games such as Dragon's Lair. So you had like animation going on in your video game, which was pretty big at the time when these came out. I mean, like think about games in the 1980s. They weren't that advanced. And you have this, which has basically full video for a game, which is pretty good. And uh, a lot of you might probably recognize Laserdisc from school, like elementary school, middle school, high school. Usually every science classroom has a Laserdisc player to play some old science video. And you might only ever use it like once in your four years in high school, but it's always there. And um, a lot of these laser discs are actually collectible nowadays because they contain director's cuts, uh, a whole bunch of extras that never made it to DVD, and even some of the commentary tracks are never released on DVD. So there's a lot of stuff out here that collectors really like to find and try to convert over the digital because you can't find it anywhere else. And oftentimes, you might have a version of a movie available on Laserdisc that you can't get on DVD, like a director's cut or something, and otherwise it's just pretty impossible to find. So now I thought it would be a good idea to go over my Laserdisc collection, which is pretty big, but it's pretty interesting as well. So right here we have Bon Jovi's Breakout, which is a music video Laserdisc. Um, as you can see by the size, it's a lot smaller than most laser discs, it's like an EP size here. And uh, if you look on the back, you have your laser vision mark right here. I said earlier that they were all manufactured with different names, the laser disc technology. But if they had that mark on them, they could be used on any player that also has that mark. So even though the names might be different, you still maintain knowing what's compatible or not. And here's Pulp Fiction gonna do try to do a run through of each have Blade Runner uh, Blade Runner is an interesting one because uh, you could not find the original theatrical cut 
for a long, long time until they finally released it in that Blade Runner box set. So people who wanted Blade Runner, the original cut, 